Tennessee brought to you by St. Pete Clearwater. There is Leach right at the top of the order. Amanda Ayala off to a good start. Chelsea Segern, their best hitter at 577 on the new year. And we are ready to go. Number two versus number six. The finale of this new tournament. And get used to it, folks. Every February, we'll be here with some of the best teams in the country. We're starting out on the road to the Women's College World Series a lot sooner <laughs> moving forward. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. It's an event. It's been a tournament, but it has been an event. Check swing, Leach. That's a fair ball. Cheryl rifles it over to first. One down. Sydney Cheryl, outstanding play. You have to remember, as a freshman, she played second base last year, now transitioning over to that third base position where Jesse Warren graduated out of. Look at the way she's going to attack this. But what I love, barehanded, immediately knows she doesn't have time. Great transition from second to third. The mindset, it's all about the speed from that position. Next up is the left fielder, Amanda Ayala, the sophomore out of Bloomfield, New Jersey. Has a home run in the tournament, a three-run job against Minnesota. And the scouting report on Megan King in her fifth start of the year. Just so much experience. She's going to be in the mid-60s. It's that heavy drop and that running curve. That's why she keeps the ball in the yard. And most importantly, she controls the game, and that's what great pitchers do. They have the ability to control at-bats and really attack hitters. King ahead in the count, 0-2. It's fouled out of play. Good numbers for Ayala. They've got a, quite a few people moving into the lineup. Trying to win everyday jobs. Right back to King. Protects herself. Over to first. Two down. Megan King in this tournament has actually only given up two earned runs. And both of those earned runs have been solo shots hit off of her. She's really limited the damage. And Opponents hitting under 200 against her. Only allowed three earned runs in the last 67 innings that she's pitched. Oh, yeah, and she's won her last 16 games, including the <laughs> national championship. Well, and last year, the entire season, she only gave up five home runs. I mean, that's how good she was at keeping the ball in the yard. But a little more known, you win the national championship, mm -hmm. people pick apart your pitching a little more. She's already got a, a win here against LSU, a ranked opponent in the top 10 and going for another one. That's a banner you're going to see at all the FSU games this year. Three zero, and she delivers. Chelsea Sager, hot start for her. Hitting 600 here in this tournament, even better. We got some very good competition. It's that curve that she throws so well to left-handed hitters. It's going to run away from them. Call strike three. Three up and three down for King and her court. I have a feeling we're going to see this a lot tonight. Curveball, outside corner. That's a look at strikeout for King to start the game.
Well, the Lady Vol Locos are ready. The Florida State fans are ready. They've already won a game here tonight as we get set for the bottom of the first. And our first look at Kaylin Arnold out there in the circle for Tennessee, the junior from Maryville. And she will get the call. 3-0 on the year with a 2.14 ERA for a Tennessee team that comes in 8-1. Their lone loss to JMU. And the Florida State starting lineup brought to you by St. Pete Clearwater. And everybody in their starting lineup tonight has a home run in this tournament. They have bashed 12 in their five games. This is Callie Herod at the top. Strong leadership with Herod and Gordon, a couple of the seniors leading things off. Herod, towering fly ball, back to the track, to the wall, and the leadoff home run for Callie Herod. Goes up and gets a pitch that she can handle. That is too sweet. It's elevated, and she elevates it out of this park. So Florida State just staying on fire with that home run power. 13th home run in their sixth game here in Clearwater. And their uncanny ability to jump on you fast in the first inning. They are scoring a ton of runs in the first inning of games. You know, what they've been doing is hitting mistakes, and this is a mistake. It's elevated, it's over the middle of the plate. And they've been punishing mistakes this weekend. It's what's made them so good. Their discipline, making that pitcher make a mistake over the plate. She also had a home run against LSU. She's liking the uh, SEC pitching, is Callie Herod. Four of them are multiple homers for the starters. have hit multiple home runs in this tournament. A bit of a Impressive. shock wave for Tennessee. Florida State fresh off a win. They were tested and only ended their game against FAU about 40 minutes ago. And Tennessee's been hanging around all day long waiting for a shot at the defending champs. She is sitting deep in the batter's box. It's been an issue for Tennessee's pitching staff giving up the home run ball. Look at Gordon standing on the chalk. Well, and a lot of that is because Arnold has a very good rise ball when it is moving. Now, obviously, the one that got hit out of the yard didn't have enough up and enough in. But if you're going to hit off a good rise ball pitcher or someone that's trying to elevate the pitch off you, you go back, try and see it longer. Full count to Carson Gordon. And the strikeout for Arnold, one down. I've seen a lot of her curveball early in this game. She's just trying to get in a rhythm, trying to throw strikes and find the strike zone early. But she is known for that explosive rise ball. She'll throw in the mid to high 60s. And she'll change speeds in any count. Be looking for that change up. She'll throw that rise ball on multiple levels, too. That home run is the eighth allowed by Arnold and Matty Moss. They really have been a two-man staff the last couple of seasons. Arnold the junior, Moss the senior. And this is Sidney Sherrill. Three spot in the lineup for Florida State. Change up goes away 2 0. Last year's ACC Freshman of the Year, Dynamite at the World Series, hit a couple of home runs. That 
Fisted there, pops it up, two down. Well, I think one of the things that when you look at this explosive offense for Florida State and Kaylin Arnold, she has the ability to mix speeds. You have to do that because right now Florida State is attacking everything out in front. You could see the contact point of Herod's home run. It's out in front. You have to delay their hands a little bit. Saw their 24 of their 78 runs now have been scored in the very first inning including a five spot they put up on Minnesota in the first inning last night. And here is the local girl, Tampa native, Lizzie Mason. Who grew up playing on these fields. Who grew up uh, going to Michelle Smith's camps as a kid. Her dad, Carl Mason, her mom, Sarah Mason. It's a great family. Carl still coaches the Clearwater Bombers, one of the youth teams. Even those daughters graduated on, he's still giving back to the community. 0-2 from Arnold. And Mason went upstairs to whack it out into left. Side is retired, but Callie Harrod with the leadoff bomb and a 1-0 lead. Callie Harrod taking a rise ball out of the yard. Knowles are on top. Balls picking up the bats. 4, 5, 6 hitters. Ashley Morgan will step in for Tennessee. It's one of those interesting things. She kind of shared the spotlight, right? Her first three years at Florida State. You, you might even say she was the 1A to an ace on the staff. Last year she wasn't their winningest pitcher. But yet when it came time to shine at the World Series, she was ready to go and ended up winning both games of the champ series after she had failed on that stage two years prior. And that didn't stop her and didn't sideline her. And she had that experience. She knew what it was like to be there, to get that ball in the circle and said, I'm not going to be denied. I felt like I was last time. I didn't pitch well. I'm not going to be denied. I think the other thing too, and Amanda, this is a big part of being successful nowadays, is she was fresh because she did have some help from Hanson. And I think right now Florida State's trying to figure out who is Who's one B and C behind the one A king? Her ERA in the World Series was something like point two three. She gave up I one earned run. Gave up one earned run, and yeah. they had to battle back in the losers bracket because they lost their first game. Only the third team in history to do that in 37 years at the World Series. That's just there you crazy. go, four and zero oh with an 0 0.20 and 30 K. Sorry, I gave her an extra 300s there. I said 0.23, it's 0.20. Sorry, Megan. Get that right, Amanda. <laughs> well, and her ability to keep the ball in the yard because she primarily throws the curve and the drop down at the knees. It's hard to elevate off her. And, and that's a perfect setup in the World Series. That's what you want to do. How many last year? Five. Five. She's, got, she's given up two so far. Two. So that's our over-under, five. Let's see if she can stay at that level. Deep in the hole, Callie Harrod. One down, rivalry week begins Monday on ESPN, Virginia and Virginia Tech. Get ready for the Cavs and the Hokies. The action begins tomorrow night at 7 Eastern, rivalry week. Presented by Wendy's at 7 Eastern on ESPN. Alliteration is a key to rivalry week. Big women's hoops double header, by the way, tomorrow night. It's play for K week. Legendary NC State coach K Yao got Notre Dame at NC State, packed house. Oregon at Oregon State, packed house. Should be a lot of fun. And we have primetime college softball in February. Ooh. Yeah. 0-2 to Passini. Second strikeout for King, two down. 
It seemed to me in this tournament that Megan King has moved the ball a little bit more up in the zone than we're used to seeing her. And Michelle talked about how good she is with her curve and a hard drop ball that she can throw. But I've seen her use a rise ball a little bit more, locate her curve ball up and in on the hands, place it at different spots up in the zone. But then she can bring it in just like that. That's her curve right there at the knees on the inside corner to a right-handed hitter. That's a close pitch, almost a called strike for her, but good pitch nonetheless. her ability to locate that pitch. Now that one elevated a little bit, didn't get the call on the lower one, but she is around the zone. There are, there's not many non-competitive pitches that Megan King throws. There's a surname familiar to softball fans, Madison Chipman's younger sister, Allie. And while Maddie patrolled uh, shortstop, Allie's a catcher and a darn good one out of Valencia, California. Two and two. <laughs> Got her to reach. Who's that rise bro Scarborough is talking about? FSU wants it. Here it goes again. St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational, presented by Wilson, is brought to you by Visit St. Pete Clearwater, home to America's best beaches. Wilson, the official glove of national champions and Olympians. And Dodge. Sold out, standing room only on this Sunday night in Clearwater at Eddie C. Moore Field. Beth Mullins, Amanda Scarborough, Michelle Smith, and Holly Rowe with you for our top 10 showdown. Callie Harrod with a leadoff home run, the difference right now. Here comes five, six, and seven for FSU. After the home run ball, Kaylin Arnold retired three straight. She did a nice job of coming back after that home run to strike out Carson Gordon and her after her. Three quick outs after. The ability to get outs after damage, always so important for pitchers. That's ripped down the line and left. Single for Anna Shelnut. Rise ball up in the zone and Shelnut, look at the way she just goes up and whacks that. She almost tomahawks it down. That ball was. Looking like it was leaving the bat on a jet airplane. <laughs> it was <laughs> roped. Fourth hit of the tournament. Passes the bat to Danny Morgan. Well, it's a Tennessee team too. You know, we talked about the loss for Florida State of their leader, Jesse Warren. Tennessee in a similar situation, losing their leader Megan Gregg, their career leader in home runs and runs batted in. So both sides in a bit of a similar situation early this year as to who's going to step into that void. Well, and Caitlin Parsons is playing shortstop tonight. Earlier, Aubrey Leach was playing a little bit of shortstop, hasn't played a lot of that in her career, only two or three games. And then Gracie Osborne is a freshman that they're really excited about but got injured in the fall, broke her leg, and is still trying to come back from that injury. Expect her to be back later. Good group of recruits for the weeklies, and they'll have the number one class coming in next year. Holly? Well, just what you're talking about is how do they replace somebody for Tennessee like that. And I talked to the players before the game. They were over in the batting cages, and we visited for a little while about what they've learned about each other this weekend. They had a really tough loss to Jay Madison yesterday, and Aubrey Leach is the one that told me, we have come together in ways we, we didn't know we could already. We've already faced adversity. This is the second weekend of the season. And she said, we are growing together so fast. The adversity that we've already faced, she said, it is a beautiful feeling. And everybody was gathered around us, and they were shaking their heads. Yes, yes, this has been so awesome to learn each other as a team. It was kind of a cool moment. 2-2 Two -two going opposite, back to the track, and that is over the head of Ayala. And the 
Base runners in a bit of a pickle here. Morgan will get tagged out and a problem with the base runner, Shellnut, at second. Well, Shellnut did not pick up the coach. I think she thought the ball was caught. So, and there you just saw her say to the dugout, I didn't see the ball. Morgan just blasts that ball. And take a look at this. This ball is just tattooed, but Shellnut, you can see she's going to take off. The ball over the head. The throw comes in. And you can see she thinks it's caught, and then she, now she doesn't know what to do. She's got to go back and touch the bag, and by this time, Morgan is right behind her. Base running miscue there for Florida State, one down. Shot down the line and right. Ayala will get it in quickly. The throw to the plate is high and not in time. Got too much air under it. And Shellnut scores, 2-0. Zoe Casa, she's bringing in that energy from the game before against Florida Atlantic where she had a game at the plate. This is a shot down the first baseline. Man, as a first baseman, that ball gets on you in a hurry. Well played by Amanda Ayala out there in right field. Shellnut's going to score from second base, but an RBI for Zoe Casas, who's had a hot bat. Zoe Casas springing in the run. She had three RBI in their win earlier tonight, and is this going to be a quick hook for Tennessee? They, they have, uh, Florida State bats have really gotten into these hits. And that is the freshman Ashley Rogers, the righty right there, talking with Karen Weekly. And she will come on here. A 2 nothing lead and some trouble for Tennessee. Tennessee's player of the year and a two-time state champion out of Athens, Tennessee, Ashley Rogers with a 3-0 record already on the season. Coming on in relief here of Kalen Arnold in the second inning. A 2-0 lead and a base runner still out there. Zoe Casas at second for Florida State. On Saturday against Utah, picked up the win in five innings of work with five strikeouts. As she makes her third appearance of this tournament. And she will see the number eight hitter, Cassidy Davis. Three hard hit balls, three singles in a row for Florida State to chase the starter. moment here for the freshman in the circle. Biggest moment so far of her young career. Talk to Karen Weekly, one of the co-head coaches for Tennessee earlier on in the tournament. And just learning about Ashley Rogers and she said she has great composure. That's the thing that I like the most about her. And already right away she said this second weekend of, of games, the bigger the situation gets, the tougher she gets. It's big words for just a freshman. Karen Weekly and her husband Ralph, the co-head coaches, seven trips to the series, two times a finalist. And both Karen and Ralph Hall of Famers with over a thousand wins separately and together. So 
two and two. They are expecting to be right in the thick of the SEC race. Florida, the preseason favorites, they're off to a hot start. LSU looked pretty good here this weekend. They were also a part of this tournament. LSU, another team that's hitting the ball. All of a sudden, the offense has come alive. Same with Kentucky. Yep. And typically, early in the season, the pitchers dominate. But I feel like this year, the bats have yeah. just awoken. That's true, yeah. Count is now full. And the strikeout for Rogers. Two down. And Rogers got Davis to chase a couple of pitches and that bat help her out a little bit. Finishes her off with the rise ball out of the zone. Two pitches in that at bat that would have been for balls. She swung at. This is the number nine hitter, Leslie Ferris. I'm Ashley Rogers. I'm going right at Leslie Ferris. I'm not even going to mess around. Just like that first pitch, got ahead 0-1, knowing that Callie Harrod, the home run hitter, is on deck. I want to get out of this inning right now. Sliced across the corner, 0-2. It upstairs, one and two. It's a nice 0-2 pitch for the freshman. A lot of times it's so easy to think, all right, I'm ahead, I want to get the strikeout, and you lay some you know, big goose egg right over the, <laughs> over the plate, and it, you wonder why it gets hit. Rogers ends the inning with a couple of Ks. And the threat is over, but Florida State adds another to take the 2-0 lead. A run in the first and another in the second for Florida State. And back to work for the Seminole D as we move to the top of the third. Seven, eight, and nine due up. Megan King has retired the first six that she has faced. Lady Vol basketball team, a winner earlier today. Let's see if Tennessee can match it. Looking for the upset of the Seminoles who haven't lost yet this year. Kaylin Hannon getting the start in left field tonight. King at 66 miles an hour with some high heat. This is Hannon's fourth at bat of the season. Had a couple of hits. Megan King looks so confident, so poised. As Holly Rowe reported earlier, wants to set the tone for the whole pitching staff this year. And she's doing it now. That's three strikeouts in a row, her fourth of the game. Oh boy, you know what's coming up on Wednesday? Game one. North Carolina and Duke Wednesday night at 9 Eastern. It's a Sonic blockbuster. They've split their last eight meetings. They'll get after it again on Wednesday night. Pop up out to center, two down. You know what's so fun to watch Megan King is that she is a fierce competitor in the circle. We learned that last year at the Women's College World Series, winning it all. She fought every pitch. She was so focused, but then she also, she'll go in the dugout, she'll have the biggest smile. Great student, cares for her teammates. She has two different sides to her. It's like Megan in the circle and then Megan off the field. And you have to have that game face. I mean, if you're gonna compete at the highest level, 
in college, international, you've got to be able to switch it over. Engage the mechanism. <laughs> <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> yeah, something like that. I think it's clear the mechanism. Yeah. Oh, but okay. I, no, but I like engage the mechanism. <laughs> I got like to engage it first before you can engage <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll compromise. You got to clear the mechanism so you can engage the mechanism. Yeah. <laughs> For love of the game, Kevin Costner, clear the mechanism. King ahead in the count. They lost their first game at the World Series last year. Had to come back and beat Georgia. Then beat the number one seed Oregon. Beat the three seed UCLA twice. And then beat the five seed Washington twice in the champ series. Underdogs throughout, they didn't care. The number of elimination games that they played at the end of the season successfully was incredible from the ACC on and then seven, <laughs> six, <laughs> excuse me, six. I'm going to give you an eye test in between. There you go. <laughs> 58 wins last year at ACC regular season title. And the first ACC national championship. Oh, I got a person. Infield pop up. Nine faced, nine retired for King and the Seminoles in a 2 0 lead. Two nothing. Florida State with the lead over Tennessee. And as Megan King has gone through the batting order once and taken care of business. And now it's back to the top of the lineup for Florida State. Their home run hitter, Callie Harrod, led off the game for Florida State at the bottom of the first, I should say. What a way to get him started, huh? This one off of Kalen Arnold. Just got over the fence. The wind is blowing out a little bit. The little wind ate it with the first run of this game, nonetheless. Their 17th home run of the season, 13th of this tournament. Grounded to short, one down. Holly? So I spent some time with Karen Weekly in their bullpen session, and this was something she was doing with her young pitchers to get them to be able to perform and hit spots Person. under pressure. You had to hit a certain quadrant four straight times or your teammate couldn't get off the bike. And it was so interesting to see Ashley Rogers, Kaylin Arnold really having to put some pressure on each other. Like, hey, I'm, I'm embarrassed. I want my teammate to get off the bike. There was no kind of pressure like peer pressure to help your teammate get off of that workout. So you definitely had to hit your spots. <laughs> That's a great tool. Keeping them motivated. Love watching the creativity of these coaches. Right? You, gotta, yeah. you gotta keep showing different stuff. Keep him engaged. That's a big part. But yeah. As a pitcher, you should know that your chore is going to be heavy and that you're going to be first in, last to leave. Like that pressure that it creates. It's similar to the pressure that you feel in a game. Don't want to let your team down. Don't want to let your teammate down. You've got to be able to perform under pressure when your heart's beating fast and when your nerves are at its highest. You've got to still be able to come through. Finding ways to recreate those same feelings at practice is best way to work through it, get experience with it. Yes, off speed. off speed is in for a strike one and two, Holly. Well, the thing that was interesting about it is so, so one time through it took 16 pitches to hit the four. The next time through it took six pitches to hit the four. Uh, the next time she got it in four pitches. So it was really interesting to see them improve under pressure as they went along of, hey, I gotta get this quicker. Very important thing to have late in the postseason, dealing with those pressure situations, those pressure moments, and really the conditioning that a lot of pitchers, I think, overlook, but focusing on their the, the different pitches they throw. You gotta have those legs right at the end of the season if you're playing in five, six, seven games at the World Series. Yeah, absolutely. You've gotta be able to throw a lot of different pitches and, and control your breathing, your fitness. You know, we talk about being in pitching shape, but your ability to to be fit and throw a full seven innings. Base hit there for Carson Gordon. Next batter, number 24, Sydney Sherrill. Sydney Sherrill, who popped up in her first at bat. Good tournament for Gordon. That's her sixth hit. 
And now Cheryl, three home runs, 11 RBI on the year. Sophomore out of Moore, Oklahoma. And the prep state player of the year. Coming up and in, 2-0. Oh. Two and one. to that point about fitness and pitching. Amanda, what kind of training did you do when you were when you were training in college? We did a lot of, for conditioning, gassers. I, yeah. A lot of gassers, so the width of the football field and back. I, I felt like that got me in great shape. Hundreds, two hundreds, nothing, re no, nothing really long distance we did. What did you guys do? I did a lot of uh, cycling work, yeah. so I would do a lot of sprints on the bike because it's lower impact. But when I was younger, I absolutely did a lot of foul, foul pulse gassers, like you're saying, stairs, running stadiums when I was in college. I did a lot of voice work. <laughs> <laughs> Elevating. Up and down. Up, up and down. 3-2 pitch. That's a deep fly ball. Back to the wall. Off of the top and out. A fortuitous bounce for Sydney Sherrill, and they've doubled the lead. And now they'll hook it out. Sydney Sherrill takes a rise ball and just gets underneath it. The launch angle is just incredible. This ball blasted into the night. Amanda, you mentioned it, wind blowing out, but look at the way it's gonna hit the top of the fence. And does it bounce back in? No, it bounces over. <laughs> and Sydney Cheryl, you can smile about that. She kind of slows down the trot. She probably thought that one was gonna be a double. She only hit about 30 last year to lead the nation. <laughs> well, in Florida State this year, it's amazing. They, they did so well last year with the long ball, but this year it's even better. They're hitting about 50% more home runs already in this season. Two home runs, Ohio State. Five in their win over Oklahoma. Another one against LSU. Three home runs last night. A home run earlier tonight against FAU. And now two more in three innings off of two different Tennessee pitchers. And while they're talking about it, don't forget, we've got some college basketball coming your way tomorrow. It's number four, Virginia, and number 22, Virginia Tech. Big Monday, a part of Rivalry Week, presented by Wendy's. The action starts at 7 Eastern. That's on the men's side on ESPN. The women's side on ESPN, too. A fantastic doubleheader for you in front of sold-out crowds in Raleigh and Corvallis. We've got Notre Dame, NC State, and Oregon, Oregon State on a play for K Monday night. This is Elizabeth Mason. Another power hitter. You look at the Knowles of their nine athletes, student athletes that have hit home runs. Five of them have hit double, uh, two home runs. You've got to go in inside against them. You've got to go hard in, yeah. especially if you're going to go up. You can't leave that pitch over the middle of the plate. Mason unloads. Back to back for Florida State. Second time this tournament. 
think they've done that. Just was talking about it. If you go inside, it has to be really in. This one was a little bit more off the plate than the one that Cheryl hit, but she still gets her hands to it. Such quick hands to that up and in pitch. That call pumped up. Elizabeth Mason has had an unbelievable invitational tournament on defense and at the plate. Lots to be excited about. She is a player and a perfect hitter to hit behind Sydney Cheryl. Six, six of the nine now with two wow. home runs, and that's just in this tournament. It's a remarkable show. Nearly 30% of their hits this weekend have left the yard. If I'm pitching against them, I'm thinking every other pitch is a changeup. <laughs> I'm doing whatever I can to take their power away. I have to find a way to slow them down, and all three of these home runs have been off of pitches that are about letters high. And I've not worked them down at the knees and really established an off-speed pitch. The numbers are quite staggering. Oh, look at that. 50% almost more home runs. Last season they hit over, just over one a game. This year they're up over <laughs> one and two thirds. Pretty incredible. And let's reflect too over the competition that they've done it this weekend yeah. against. They're not just playing teams that they should be steamrolling through. They're playing tough competition. And this weekend, this tournament, they're over two a game. They've played long. We're going to use our speed. Ohio State, they hit, remember they hit five against Oklahoma. Yep. They played LSU, Minnesota. Catches made by Allie Shipman. And you know, when, when Coach said that to us before this tournament, we're going to use our speed, you know, we're going to be aggressive. It, it was, of course, I'm thinking, well, they stole a lot of bases last year, so they're going to continue to be aggressive and steal a lot of yeah. bases. I want... Uh, unbelievable. I have to actually see how many stolen bases they have on the tournament. It's definitely not as many home runs as many. <laughs> Schmitty, that would be six. There you go. See? <laughs> I'm here if you need me. You okay. guys just talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> And they've been so good at hitting the first strike that they see, too. Hitting yes. early in the count It's when they've had the most success. First home run came on a 1-0 count. Well, it makes sense. What are most pitchers trying to do? They're trying to get ahead early. It's probably one of the best pitches you're going to see. So be aggressive. Attack it. Go get it. at 64 miles an hour. She definitely has the best movement on her curveball tonight. She'll throw it back door too. So we'll throw it on both sides of the plate. Jammed. And the infield pop-up Morgan is retired. But back-to-back -back home runs and a 5-0 lead for Florida State will have Holly Rowe talking with Karen Weekly when we come back. Elizabeth Mason. Her dad Carl's call is much better than mine. Sing it, Carl. Sing it.
Welcome back to the St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational presented by Wilson here with Tennessee head coach Karen Weekly. And I see you talking with Kaylin Arnold. I see you having conversations with Ashley. What are you talking to your pitchers about right now? Just talking to them about how they're feeling out there. You know, obviously they've given up some pretty hard hits. Um, it's early in the season. I love the experience they're getting, what adjustments they need to make from here. I think Kaylin, uh, maybe a little bit of adrenaline, trying to do too much out there because she was throwing a little bit too hard, actually, and her ball wasn't breaking. And in the bullpen, she was getting great break. Um, Ashley and I just talked about a pitch that she felt like she probably should have shaken off the call. And, uh, you know, we talk about I want them to be committed, and I, I want them to shake off if they don't, the, don't like the call or they see the batter do something. So those are things that you want to work through early in the season, and those are the conversations we're having. All right. It's okay to shake them off, guys. Just keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Scared. Thank you very much, Holly. Taylor Swift knows. Shake it off. That's, oh, nice. She knows. Nice. Elizabeth Mason with a home run, and uh, Sydney Sherrill with a two-run home run. In that third inning, a 5 nothing lead for Florida State. And Megan King quite comfortable right now looking up at that scoreboard. Has retired the first nine, so it's back to the top of the order and Aubrey Leach, the All-American leadoff. Definitely seen a different intensity out of Florida State in this game than in game one of their doubleheader against Florida oh, yeah. Atlantic. In between pitches and the dugout. They the quickly plate. shook that off, didn't they? Yeah, they did. <laughs> they didn't have much time to, but they did. Well, and that's the other teaching moment for Lonnie Alameda, right? Okay, let's not play down to the opponent. Let's play up to our level of competition, and let's play. Let's play against ourselves and continue to improve no matter who we're up against. And all the credit in the world to FAU, they played a heck of a ball game today and had Florida State in trouble before the Knowles pulled away late. Well, and that's sometimes youth, you know, when you're playing a game, you, sh you need to go out with that same intensity every single time. The game deserves that. Well, and you think too, remember, this is our sixth game of the weekend. So there's six yes. game in three days. So it's it's been a lot. It's been an awesome tournament, awesome weekend. It's a good opportunity to bring up our friend Sue Enquist, the uh, Hall of Famer and the old UCLA coach. The game doesn't know who's supposed to win, right? So you got to go out and play hard every time and prove it every night. One, two from King. Leach fouls it off. You can see that Danny Morgan, the center fielder, and Zoe Casas really shaded towards the left side. You can't even see Zoe Casas, the left fielder, because she's playing right up against that left field there line. There she is. Yeah, there she is. <laughs> and even Elizabeth Mason is playing in right center field. You can tell that Megan King likes to work the outside corner with that curveball to these lefty-on-lefty -lefty matchups. Morgan's even further over into left center than she usually is. Well, and if I'm Leach right now, I'm not even worrying about the inside pitch. <laughs> I am. Not going to get one? Not going to get one. <laughs> Promise you that. They're all going to be on that outside half of the dish. Full count. And a strikeout for Megan King. That is number five. <laughs> Just so nasty with that lefty-lefty matchup. It's so hard to differentiate between her pitches. And so as this pitch approaches, it's going to slide. And you wonder, is it going up? Is it going out? And if you notice, when Megan King is throwing, the majority of her strikes are swing and misses. And so take a look at this. So the split screen, you're going to be able to see a curveball and a rise ball. Here you can see the hitters, they can't differentiate. They, as the ball gets halfway there, is it a curve or is it a rise? You can't tell. The pitch on the left is a curveball. The pitch on the right was a rise ball. So as a hitter, you're looking and you're trying to look for spin and, and see as that, but as that ball comes down the tunnel, is it cutting and curving or is it rising up? And that's why Megan King has gotten so many swing and misses. Base hit, the first one of the night for Tennessee. Amanda Ayala delivers. Well, and not to mention, too, she'll move that curveball down a little bit and it'll go out of that same tunnel and it'll look more like a drop ball. So she'll get that rise ball movement and that curveball away from the lefty and then also down a little bit. It's just, it's hard to pick up and tell. Next batter, number 
Number three hitter is Chelsea Segern. Struck out looking at a curveball in the first. King at 68 miles an hour now. I mean, even when you look at the matchup, too, Tennessee only has two righties in the lineup. So this is an optimal lineup for Megan King to throw against. Hey, don't forget the second season of the seven inning softball podcast continues this week at the SPCE Late Invite. The podcast can now be found on your ESPN app, folks. Also, iTunes and wherever you listen to podcasts. We'll have a fresh seven innings podcast for you next week. Give us a follow on Twitter. That's where you get your lineup card so you know what is going to be on the show ahead of time. I think Holly's got an interview this week with Kate Gordon, who had a four home run day here for James Madison. And consecutive at bats, yes. by the way. And an inside the Parker, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Impressive. <laughs> James so Madison, you, want, you one up to me. We just played yeah. finish. I don't have anything. This is a that. one up That's group. It. Okay, she <laughs> gotta shut you down. There. You gotta go fast. You gotta go fast. You gotta have a heavy drop, is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and J JMU is one of those teams that I think they're gonna surprise a lot of folks. Megan Good in the circle, very strong, and their bats explosive. Ball four, so a base hit and a walk. Two on here for Tennessee. A good at bat by Seger, and she took several close pitches within that at bat. Find her way to get on base. Ooh. Fastball in the inside corner, just off the plate, maybe a little bit. Well, I'm not lying, I want that pitch. Yeah. Oh, for sure. <laughs> I'm in the circle. 100%. You want every pitch. Of course, I know. You, you, you didn't have to add that, but I think most <laughs> of America assume that. <laughs> So what makes her so good, though, yeah. if she misses, yeah. she's just missing about an inch or two off the yeah. plate. And sometimes she gets a call, sometimes she doesn't. But she hardly ever misses on the plate to get her with it. I like the fact, too, that she's limited her walks. That's only her third walk of the tournament. Have five strikeouts tonight in three and a third innings of work. Number four hitter here, Ashley Morgan. Well, and it, it comes back to that maturity level and ability to control the game. Amanda, you mentioned she doesn't give up a lot of walks. All of her pitches are competitive, and she's locked in. And, and that's why when you talk to young pitchers, you always want to tell them you have to, every pitch, and or young teams even, you have to win every single pitch, whether or not you're trying to hit it or throw it. It's a pitch, too, that she wants you to swing at. It's about a ball or two off the plate. She wants you to help her out. What puts more pressure on a pitcher like Megan King is when you take those pitches and you make her put the ball more on the plate to make a mistake. Going opposite. Base hit. Bases loaded for Tennessee. You can tell they're seeing the ball a little bit better. Second time through the lineup. They've had a hit, a walk, and now another hit all within this inning. Megan King goes back to that same pitch, curveball in the outside corner, almost an identical pitch that Ashley Morgan swung and missed on the pitch before. Doesn't put it in any kind of different place. That in itself is a little bit of a mistake by Megan King, especially to the cleanup hitter, Ashley Morgan. You know she's there for a reason. Yeah, slightly elevated. If she moves that down two ball lengths, that's a much more competitive pitch is the elevation of that mid thigh that got her in trouble. Don't forget on Wednesday we got a big college basketball matchup for you, rivalry week, and this is the big one, North Carolina and Duke. It's a Sonic Blockbuster Wednesday at 9 Eastern on ESPN and your ESPN app. Florida State comfortably in front, but uncomfortable here in the top of the fourth. Bases are loaded. And for the first time tonight, Megan King has had to work. Gets the infield, pop up, Gordon's got it. Two outs. When 
you think about it, this is who you want up. You want the righties up with the bases loaded, but it's the lefties that have done the damage against Megan King. They're also ready freshmen. Yes. And here's another one, Allie Shipman. King struck her out on a rise ball in the second. Allie, does she just not have so many of the same mannerisms as Maddie? Yes. I mean, they, <laughs> they look like twins. Mm -hmm. Their eyes are the same. The way they look at the bats is the same. The ponytail yeah. moves the same. <laughs> Their ponytail is for sure the same. Chase the rise again. One and two. Ayala, Sagern, Morgan aboard. Shipman foul. That's a much better look if it's a 5-4 score than a 5-0 score. Can Shipman help him out? Lays off the rise that time. Good in bad adjustment to take that pitch. And the one thing that Megan King doesn't throw very often is anything at a different speed. She'll throw about 65 to 68 miles an hour, but you don't have to really worry about an off-speed pitch from her. She'll throw it every now and then, but not consistent. Chopped up the middle, and that'll get through. And Tennessee's on the board once and twice. A two-run single for the freshman, Allie Shipman. Big hit for the rookie. And Amanda, you mentioned it. It was a great take on a one-two count that allowed her to get into this situation low in the zone and just high hops it right back up the middle. Parrott playing more toward the 5-6 hole, unable to pick that up. So two big runs on the board for Tennessee. And I'll tell you what, Danny Morgan is having a rough day today throwing the ball in from center field. And I'm sure Tennessee is keeping an eye on that. They're going to be sending runners if they get the chance. The pinch hitter here is Bearden. Haley Bearden, the lefty senior out of Clarksville, Tennessee. What a rally by Tennessee in this inning. No hits, no walks the first time through their order. She was perfect. Four hits in this inning. Three hits and a walk in this inning. Like that. Two and one, the count to Bearden. and shipment aboard. Did that hit beard? The umpire saying it went off of the hands or part of the bat, so it's a foul ball. Hit the knob. Yeah. Ricochets off and gets Shelmet. 33rd pitch of this inning. Uh, tip jumps out of the glove. Break there for Bearden. Oh, and that hit her again. It hit the knob again. <laughs> Wait, no Twice. way. Two, 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 two times in one chance. I know. That. <laughs> Uh, 
did. Yeah. yeah. It's a foul ball. Ralph Weekly just can't believe it. Surely it hit her elbow or her wrist, something else other than the knob of the bat or of the bat, but nope. It's just checking, making sure. Let's see if we can hear it hit the knob. Still in there, two and two. Well, you know, too, if it hit your wrist or any other body part, you're going to be in a lot more oh, pain yeah. <laughs> than just looking back at the ball. Yeah. Bearden gets under that. Back to the track, to the wall. And it is caught by Jay Morgan. Did she grab it and keep it in the park? Wow. Unbelievable. First off the blast, it looks like it's going out of the yard. Bearden gets all of it, but look at the way Danny Morgan going back, finding the fence and leaping up, taking that ball and bringing it back in the yard. Danny Morgan getting it done for the Knowles. And of course, Megan King saying, you're my queen, you're my queen. <laughs> Welcome back to St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational presented by Wilson. I am here with Florida State head coach Lonnie Alameda, and I'm emotionally exhausted from that inning. There were some highs and lows for your team. For sure. Megan King got a little frustrated. What are you trying to get her back to doing? Um, I don't necessarily know if it's frustration. She's just going a little fast right now. She's feeling the, the excitement of it. You know, I mean, this has uh, been a great weekend for us, and I'm proud of the girls and their fight. And, um, you know, she just wants to be the one to get after it, and she just needs to slow down a little bit. Your team has been here since about 1 o'clock this afternoon. Yeah. Um, what worry do you have that fatigue is creeping in, or do you think you have enough in the tank against Tennessee tonight? Um, I mean, how can you not, especially after that play, like just put a little more in your tank right there. So, um, I mean, we're fatigued, we're tired, but that's the way it's going to be, and that's a post to mindset, so you got to learn how to battle through it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Incredible. Well, that pretty much sums up everybody's mood right now. This is good stuff for February on the road to the Women's College World Series. That's got to be a sports center top test, oh, too. absolutely. We've seen so many this weekend, this entire tournament, that could make Sports Center top 10, but that one absolutely has to. We should just take over Sports Center. <laughs> yes, yes. Invitational top 10. Well, by the way, that was a three run home run that would have tied the game. Yes. If Morgan doesn't make that catch. We were saying as, as excited as Florida State was about that catch, Tennessee was just as excited. Came out of the dugout for Haley Bearden. They're pumped. Even though it got caught, they know that that was a big inning for this team. So 7-8-9 for the Seminoles. Zoe Casas singled and drove in a run in the second. Boy, and it, it was after Morgan had struggled a bit throwing the ball back yeah. in, but man, she can jump. She got some. <laughs> she got, got some pass. hops, some yeah, springs. Exactly. Woo. She played that so well. Oh, perfectly red. 
Well, and we were noticing, too, that there's no wind at all. I think it turned off at about 8 p.m., and it's 8.17 <laughs> right now. So wind was blowing hard out. Not anymore. Anybody immediately think Tiffany Howard Auburn at the uh, oh, yeah. Champ Series a couple years ago? Whew. Just going back in a different angle. That's it. Yeah. Oh, Left side, right little, side. A little further to the right. Yeah. 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 But absolutely. Postseason feels. Oh, yes. We are at the St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational. It's a brand new softball tournament. We are all. Uh, can we say we're owners? Uh, it's a company thing, right? <laughs> yes, yes. yes. Okay. Owned yeah. and operated yeah. by ESPN. ESPN uh, and uh, so many people behind the scenes we have to give a shout out to and all the folks here in Florida, including Clearwater, St. Pete, Pinellas County. Yeah. Uh, we're excited to come back and do it again next year. The whole another fabulous group of teams. We'll finish this first. But. <laughs> well, it has been. It's been the events group. And you said a lot of people, Kristen Shaver and Hannah McSwain from the events group has just been fabulous uh, for ESPN Mega Ronowitz on the production side and next year. Keep your eye on that website, there folks. We're, we're going to be unveiling the teams throughout this season. I'll let you know who's going to be here next year so you can get your tickets and join us. Mike Lockwood and Kevin Dunbar from the, the city of Clearwater. The mayor has been here. Tim Ramsberger and a whole bunch of folks from the, the county. Sarah Kirschman. It's just been, it's been so many people that have dedicated about a year and a half of their lives to making sure that this event goes off. And it's been an event. There have been a lot of other things. Cool count to Casas. Aubrey Leach calling for it. Let's go back and revisit that catch. We'll probably, you'll probably see this replay quite a bit this year. <laughs> it's awesome. Danny Morgan could tell playing towards left center field too. She was shaded that way, able to get a good beat on it. I love how she took her throwing hand though immediately when she hit the ground, she knew she had it. She tried to cover it up so that it would not fall out and she got it. The pumped up Megan King saved the, oh, may have saved the day for the seven -alls. That would have tied yeah. the score, a three run. Home run erased. Think about, too, how this is the, the first of its kind tournament. ESPN's never had a women's event like this. Yeah. Softball, they chose softball. And, man, has it have the fans shown up, had some great games, sold out. Nobody could get in here. Any extra people yesterday? Well, and it's, it is the event. It's, it's everything together. It's the field side by side, so you're watching two amazing matchups. You got, you got these two teams, LSU, Oklahoma, were here. That's four of the top ten were here. Texas, Oklahoma State, both in the top 20. You got the other field next door. You got, what, seven other fields, Smitty, up the street here. It, 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 and it's been the, the players involving and being engaged within the community as well. Just can't say enough about the whole feel of it. And, and it feels like the postseason. You mentioned it, yeah. Amanda. Is like, you know, just gives you goosebumps. Definitely does. It's only February 17th. Oh, yeah. Cassidy Davis coming on and diving in its offer glove in center field. Ashley Holcomb. And Davis. Safe at first. Jenna Holcomb almost got there. She didn't get a great jump. It was in the air for a long time before she started to run forward, and then it was just too late. But still, she had an opportunity. It was right there, hit the heel of her glove that she could have caught it. Has speed to be able to make up for it, but didn't get a great read off the bat. is the number nine hitter, Leslie Ferris. Struck out on a curveball in the second. So these hitters now down at the bottom of the order, their second look at Ashley Rogers since she came on in relief in that second inning. The freshman. Actually, 
Julie Rogers has a little giddy up on her pitches. Not throwing 70 miles an hour, but it seems like she throws a heavy ball because it's got some good spin on it. Hits the glove and it pops in there at 65, 66 miles an hour, but it seems to me like it's harder than that. And a strikeout for Rogers, two down. Well, earlier this week, uh, some of these players took a little time away from the game to visit patients at Johns Hopkins All Children's Hospital in St. Petersburg. The players got a chance to interact with some some of their fans, some of the youngsters, sign autographs, pose for pictures, do a little ball toss. It was a, a good visit for all involved at the Johns Hopkins All Children's Hospital in St. Petersburg. And it was Florida State's pitcher, Megan King, who spearheaded all of that. She's a nursing major and hopes to one day work at Johns Hopkins All Children's Hospital. And I love the way she reached out to all the other clubs via social media and said, hey, I want to put this together. And head coach uh, Lonnie Alameda went as well. Oklahoma State was there a couple days. Texas, uh, LSU, just really incredible effort by Megan King to, to make that happen and, and to touch those children's lives. Well, even in talking to Mike White before Texas came to the tournament midweek, he was really excited. What stuck out to him the most about this tournament, first thing he said was the fact that it's more than just a softball tournament and brought up that visit that his team was going to get a chance to do while they were here. And it means a lot. These coaches understand that perspective is important for these young athletes. And someday you have a bad day, you go 0 for 3, and then you meet a child who's battling cancer or... You know, has another ailment, makes you realize, oh, well, today wasn't that bad after all. We got a 5 2 game here in the bottom of the fourth. One on with two outs. Top of the order here, Callie Harrod, who has a home run back in the first inning. I've seen a couple of those popping out of the glove yes. of the catcher. It's like, as a pitcher, you're just like, yeah, yeah, kick, kick, kick. Oh. <laughs> nice try, nice try. Again, I think her best movement has been her curveball that she's been able to move around both sides of the plate. She has spun it up a little bit, got the most swings and misses on that pitch. And the dirt blocked by Shipman. Two and two. Single by Cassidy Davis, got her over at first. Eight of the nine in this batting order have a hit tonight for FSU. As Megan King looks on, boy, she cruised through the first three innings. And then the second time through, Tennessee adjusted. And put up a two spot. We're denied more by the catch of the tournament from Danny Morgan. Herod base hit. Great at bat by Herod. Fouled off some pitches. That one that was a little bit lower in the zone and didn't have as much movement on it. Pulled it a little bit, but man, they've been just swinging hard that hard ground balls have gotten through the infield. Miss hits have been hits. Megan Tomlinson will come on to run for Morgan. Excuse me, for Davis. Carson Gordon, a strikeout and a base hit, and then scored on the Sydney Sherrill two-run home run. How about those two plays when you talk about the amazing catch by Morgan to rob a home run and the Sherrill home run that bounced off of the top of the wall and went out instead of coming back in? Game of inches. And even Harrods to lead off the game wasn't just sent out here like a moonshot. It just got over the fence. I 
think that's going to be a big big pitch for Rodgers. The ability to throw that at 52 miles an hour with that explosive curve and rise ball is and more matured in that circle. Coach calls it more often for her. Got Gordon in an 0-2 hole here with two outs and two on. Just missed. Along with that curveball again, just missed off the plate. Nice spot though for Rogers. Ooh, it's close. That's a hard take. It is a very hard take, yeah. Carson Gordon, though, has had such a good eye in this tournament. She's drawn seven walks, most on the team for this tournament. And the strikeout on the rise ball from the freshman Rogers. Two left on, a three-run game as we head to the fifth. Going upstairs for the cake. Now back here in Clearwater, Florida State leading Tennessee five to two. All the fans on hand here tonight. Primetime softball in February for you on the road to the Women's College World Series. As we move to the top of the fifth, the momentum has shifted to Tennessee. And after their bats came alive in the fourth, can they do it two innings in a row? The, the only reason we're not tied is the catch of the young season by Danny Moore that robbed hey, Haley hey, Bearden of a three-run hey, home run out in left hey, center field. Hey, hey. And now how does Megan King respond after getting roughed up a bit in that last inning? Facing 8-9 and then the top and slapped for a base hit by Parsons. Rivalry week begins tomorrow on ESPN. Hope you'll be there for Virginia and Virginia Tech. The action starts at 7 Eastern on ESPN. And a women's doubleheader on ESPN2 with North Carolina State hosting Notre Dame and Oregon State hosting Oregon in what should be fabulous sold out environments. King spins and fires to first. Lead runner down to second, one out. As good as a sacrifice there. It's big inning, last inning, whenever it was second time through the order for Tennessee in the fourth inning when they had those three hits. They took advantage of that walk, they scored those two runs, but we all know it could have been more. Check swing, Aubrey Leach, and Morgan, it hits off of her chest. And the throw down a second in time, uh, uh, diving back in safely is Parsons. And Danny Morgan's roller coaster ride continues in center field. in the air for a long time again and hits off of her glove one that she absolutely has to have instead of excuse me off of her chest not off of her glove bounces away really close call too by Caitlin Parsons who almost got caught in no man's land that really could have killed a rally for Tennessee but she's got her hand back in there I thought well they're going to rule that a single for Aubrey Leach not quite sure how, but yeah, a couple of base runners here with one out. Let's just make sure, take a closer look. Yeah, her hand was up. If the throw would have been lower, I think she'd have been out. Yeah, but the throw is a little high. Ayala singled her last at bat and scored.
a slow roller to first. Gordon will check. Her only play is to her own bag. Two down, and the runners advance. Tennessee has made some really good adjustments against Megan King. They're going out there being a lot more aggressive earlier in the count. And this, Carson, a little bit lackadaisical. Carson Gordon gets back just in time. Chelsea Sagarin. They were here the last inning. One swing, one inch away from tying the game. Right back, threatening. Sager, two and one. That one slapped out to left and cut on as Casas to make the catch. They made a go at it, but couldn't add to the run total. 5-2 FSU. Five two Florida State with the lead over Tennessee as we head to the bottom of the fifth inning. Great night for some softball. We had a lot of fun on Friday night with the welcome banquet here at the St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational. The players had a great time as well. Food, music, games, dancing, and of course, it's a great just all around event. And then we were really thrilled with the clinic. I think we got extra out of those kids because of the fact that we were at this event yeah. playing next to college athletes who are their favorite. Just had some extra energy, some extra mojo to it. Really a successful package deal event. Elizabeth Mason, a fly out and a home run. This was in the third inning, right after Sydney Sherrill sent one out. Mason did the same. She just clobbered that pitch up in the zone. Severn stays down on it, in time to get her two out. It's such a great pitch, and the more that Ashley Rogers continues to pitch, the more that she's going to be able to work that off-speed pitch that has downward movement to it. Hit off the end of the bat, created a ground ball, has over-the-top spin, able to throw that pitch for a strike. She dropped it down to 51 miles an hour. It's her changeup. It's a big pitch. It's so important for her, especially because she has a look with her curveball and a look up with her rise ball. That gives her another look down with an off-speed drop ball like pitch. Is that a shell nut? It's 
singled and scored in the second, popped up in the third. Hit home runs in both games of the championship series win last year over Washington for the school's first national championship. Her teammates coined her postseason Anna last year, the ACC championship knock that kept him going. And I love the fact that she told Holly Rowe this year that I want to be known as all season. <laughs> all season Anna. Not just postseason or preseason, mm -hmm. all season. Here's the one, two, and Shelna strikes out. One, two, three inning. Quick work for the freshman Rogers. Five complete and a five, two Florida State lead. I don't think it's any surprise what the defensive MVP performance is brought to you by Wilson. Danny Morgan back to the wall and keeps it in the park. That catch making Danny the defensive MVP brought to you by Wilson. That was a three run home run that she robbed that would have tied the game for Tennessee. All important third out of the inning too. They quickly got out of it, got back into the dugout. Morgan, there again, one down. Four, five, and six in the order here. You know, Karen Weekly, when I talked to her earlier on in this tournament, really compared this Tennessee team to their 2015 team. When the last, last time that they made it to the Women's College World Series in the sense that they had a deep pitching staff and the fact that they could hit one through nine really felt like the addition of Ashley Rogers to their pitching staff made a huge difference to the feel of this team. And then also the bats that they added, one through nine in their lineup. I thought that was a, a good thing for this Tennessee team to compare them to that last 2015 team that made it there. Well, I, I love what this, uh, this team has done so far. I mean, shut down in the first three innings by Megan King. And since then, their adjustments have been stellar. Put the ball in play. After that Aubrey Leach strikeout to start off that fourth inning when they scored, they've not yet struck out since. Savannah Huffstetler, two and two. All right, at this point, too, you're fighting through the fatigue. Been a long weekend for both these teams. 
You know, this is a big game tonight. I had a chance for a top 10 win on your resume. And also an opportunity to send a little message if you happen to run into each other down the line. Florida State led 5-0. Tennessee has come back for a couple of runs. Do you mean down the line like in Super Regionals maybe? Like Could in 2015? Be. Could be. The last Could time that Tennessee yes. made it to the World Series, they beat Florida State to get there. That's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Fly ball and back on the grass is Herod. Two down. Well, tonight on Sports Center after UFC Fight Night on ESPN, you can go inside the octagon with the experts. Rachel Nichols has a conversation with uh, Luka Doncic. Sports Center at midnight after UFC on ESPN and the ESPN app. And perhaps the number one play of the day, Danny Morgan's catch. One, two, three inning. Uh, <laughs> Megan King will take it and get on out of there. <laughs> Middle of six, three-run lead. How about three more home run balls for Florida State? The leadoff for Callie Herod in the first, and then back-to-back -back in the third with Sydney Sherrill and Elizabeth Mason. They are the offensive MVPs brought to you by Wilson. And the home run count, let's see, now up to 15 in their six games in this tournament. Oof. This is their sixth game of the tournament. I think impressive is that they're hitting. They averaged over one a game last year, and, and they've upped it. They've upped the game by about 60%. Four multi home run games this, yeah, this weekend. Six, seven, and eight coming up here to face Ashley Rogers on in relief since the second inning. Gave up the home runs in the third, but then has settled in. Two from Rogers. Got her. Let's check in with Holly. Well, we told you about beginning this journey for Florida State, trying to defend their national championship. And I wanted to show you again their motto for the year, defend nothing, attack everything. And look at the mountains, the peaks on that sign as they step onto their practice field every day. Those are 17 mountaintops. Those are 17 players on the team. They literally had them draw stick figure mountains. Like we were at the top of these mountains last year. We're all starting at the bottom. And she had them literally draw themselves at the bottom of these peaks to let them know that it was going to be another <laughs> climb. But I, I love how they're climbing so far this weekend. I think they've made it up a few rungs on that sign. <laughs> It's such a long season. We're just in February, and we go all the way to the beginning of June. Just so many games are played. So many ups and downs of a season. Yeah, what they, what they play last year, over 70? By the time they got through the championship series and won the title? Well, and that's why you've got to be fit. That's why you know Coach Alameda in this tournament has worked very hard to throw her younger pitchers to try to find out who is that n number two, number three behind King. And this is the time of year that every pitcher, even you know Ashley Rogers, has been doing it. You're, you're looking through your toolbox as a pitcher, and you're like, "What tools do I have in there?" You know, and if sometimes your tools disappear, and did you leave them on the bench, or did did your opponent take yeah. your tool out? My rise ball. Where'd my yeah. rise ball go? They found a, a pretty good second pitcher in Catherine Sandercock this weekend, and uh, I think the book is still out on. On Kara Bilodeau and uh, Mackenzie Herzog, we, we didn't see a whole lot of them this weekend, but when they're healthy, that could be a pretty good pitching staff right there behind King. 
Come on, that's what you need. You need innings. You need someone that can come in and can throw some innings so that you go into the postseason fresh. Knocked down at first base by Morgan, and she'll step on the bag. Two outs. City Davis coming up, number eight in the order. Had to re-enter Davis after she was a pinch run for. You know, Ashley Rogers has really settled back into she this has. game. Did a nice job whenever she came into the second inning, had a tough third inning, but then ever since that last home run was hit off of her, she's done a nice job of keeping them the Florida State hitters down. Retired six in a row now. I think a big part is that just throwing that curveball on both sides of the plate very well and working a little bit off the plate too. And she's expanded the zone with her rise ball more. She's located that pitch better to give it a different look to these hitters. A couple of home runs. They've hit three in this game. You see the pitch location about belt high, not high, up and up. Those are two home runs hit off of her. Look at the location now on her rise ball. A few strikeouts now where she's moved that pitch more up in the zone by their, by their eyes. That's learning in game, in inning, and making adjustments for the freshman Ashley Rogers. Six strikeouts. And her ability, I love the way that she's using that off-speed pitch. I mean, that really helps set up everything else. It's explosive, and then you put the rise ball up at the eyes. It's easy to swing through it. Since the home run, she's retired 10 of 12. And another rise ball up and out of the zone, just like Amanda drew it up. K number seven and a 5-2 FSU lead. St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational presented by Wilson is brought to you by Visit St. Pete Clearwater, home to America's best beaches. Five two Florida State with the lead over Tennessee. Last chance coming up here in the top of the seventh for the Lady Vols. And the story once again, the pitching of Megan King and three more home runs for this explosive offense. It's so much fun to watch and their discipline that they've shown at the plate. And then also when they decide to swing, they're all in and they're committed. 
and, and I love the way that Tennessee, they got down by five, but they didn't give up. They came back, put a couple more on the board. They had that unfortunate fortunate catch for Florida State, but unfortunate for them where Danny Morgan took away a three-run shot. Yes. So, you know, Tennessee, great job of putting it all together, getting back in the game. Got a young freshman pitcher in there, uh, you know, getting some innings, Ashley Rogers. So you know, kudos to the Lady Balls as well. If they're going to get it done, they got to go with the bottom of the order, 7, 8, 9, to face the All-American Megan King. Looking for the complete game win. To get to 5-0 and on the season. Bearden grounds it to Carson Gordon at first. One down. Megan King getting the start. The All-American coming from the left-hand side, but so good with that curveball, locating in all parts of the zone, even mixing up a little bit with her rise ball. And I love the way that she just has moved the ball around. She's controlled the game. Little adversity through the middle after shutting everybody down on the ball's lineup, one through nine. So those first three innings, she was rolling. Oh, she yeah. retired everybody in order. A little bit of a hiccup mid-game, but getting it back together. Just over 100 pitches now, the five hits, five strikeouts. Discipline of these Tennessee hitters now, recognizing that curveball a little bit sooner and realizing it's going to run from them and laying off it. Two strike count now to Caitlin Parsons. Two and two. A flare out to left, two down. Well, we'll show you one more time. This is the difference tonight. Danny Morgan robbing what would have been a game tying three run home run from Haley Beard. And hauling it back in. A game saving catch in the fourth for Florida State. And now they're one out away. It's an eight foot fence, too. And <laughs> she's not the tallest knoll out there on the field, so she got up. Bring that back. of pride too in this win for Florida State trying to be the only undefeated team that mm -hmm. leaves this tournament for the tournament games. I mean, going 6-0. Everybody almost lost a game this weekend. Getting to 11-0 on the season. They started out the week in number two in the country right behind UCLA. Got a win over number three, Oklahoma. Right behind them, they'll play fourth ranked Florida a couple of times later in the year. They go to Arizona too, and play them in Tucson in their renovated stadium. That'll be a good couple of good games. Can you, uh, it's humid here in Florida, and the ball's still leaving the yard. Can you imagine <laughs> yes. what it's going to do out uh -oh. there in Arizona? <laughs> Woo! Holy cow. It could be a fireworks show out there on both sides. And Jenna Holcomb draws the walk to get to the top of the order. Well, if you want to be a part of this next year, St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invite.com is the website. Keep an eye on that for ticket information. It'll be February 13th through the 16th. And uh, all throughout the season, we'll be releasing the teams that are going to be accepting invitations to be a part of all the fun next year. 16 teams, 11 of them this year were ranked. And we have had some fantastic moments. Ten 
to see. They don't think they're done just yet. Down to their final out, but they're all American at the plate with one on. Beth, do you have a jacket like that? I think the softball world wants I, to know. <laughs> Holly Rose got sneakers, sneakers like that. I want to see the jacket and the I, sneakers <laughs> combined. And I actually saw cowboy boots today. Yes. Yes. Pretty impressed. The uppers of the boot were a <laughs> softball. <laughs> Finally got our emoji this year. Yes. That's big news. Moving up. Optic Nora. yellow is in girls. <laughs> <laughs> Two and one as King finds the strike zone. Down to their final strike. Popped up. Ferris has it. And the Florida State Seminoles beat Tennessee 5-2, to two, the final to improve to 11-0 on the season. They go 6-0 here in Clearwater. What a great event.